Good afternoon. We gather together today to remember and celebrate the life of Jean Krog, who passed into the presence of his Lord on July 18th, 2020. As Jean lived his life to honor the Lord, he would also want to honor the Lord today. On behalf of Jean's family, thank you for coming today. Your presence and expressions of love and support are deeply appreciated. This is a day of many emotions as we remember Jean's life and we realize our loss. We acknowledge the pain of separation but as believers, we do not grieve like those who have no hope. Our grief is overwhelmed by the knowledge that Jean has successfully completed the course of life that God laid out for him. He won his race. Because of his faith in Christ, he is victorious. Actually, this is what he lived his whole life for for that moment when he steps into the presence of Jesus. He is now free from his physical limitations. He is free from his struggles. He is free from his frustrations. So for the next few minutes, I would encourage you to relax and remember. Shed a tear. Smile, laugh. For tears, smiles, and laughter were all important parts of Jean's life. And then for us, there's a fantastic couple verses in Proverbs chapter 3 that say, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust him with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, for there are many things that we do not understand. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge that he is Lord, that he is the God and creator of the universe. Acknowledge him for who he is. Look to him for guidance. Look to him for strength and he will make your path straight. He will lead you in the right ways. We have a God who will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He's always here. He's always with us. We need to trust in him with our whole heart. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful today for that promise of eternal life that you have given to all those who place their faith in Christ. We thank you for Gene's life and how he desired to honor you with the way that he lived. We thank you for the example that he is to us. And Lord, today we pray that your name might be honored, that you might be glorified, and Lord, that we might commit ourselves to following you most, more closely. Lord, be our strength, be our comfort, be our help, be our guide today. In Jesus' name, amen. Stepping 
Donald Eugene Grog, 76 years of age, passed into the presence of his Lord at 1.40 a.m. on Saturday, July 18, 2020, at Adams Memorial Hospital. Gene previously resided at Swiss Village since 2016. He was born on Sunday, August 8, 1943, in Adams County. He married Janice Klein on Friday, July 14th, 1967, in Union Church uh, in Huntington. Grace, or Jean was a 1961 graduate of Hartford Township High School. He was very proud to be a Hartford gorilla. He obtained his Bachelor of Science degree in 1965 from Huntington College and his Master of Science from Ball State University. Gene taught math, health, PE, and driver's ed in high school. He began his career in teaching and coaching in Madison Township, Jay County, for two years, Southern Wells for one year, Penville High, six years, and finished out his teaching career at South Adams, retiring in 2008. Gene coached girls and boys basketball, baseball, cross country, track, and tennis. While devoting his life to teaching and coaching, Gene also enjoyed raising animals and farming. His farm, which he called Triple J, included sheep, hogs, turkey, and miniature ponies. His passion in life was his family, and he attended their many events and supported them in their endeavors. Gene was a member of the Adams County Teachers Association Coaches Association, and West Missionary Church. Gene served as Sunday School Superintendent, teacher, and church board member for many years. He was also a member of the Adams County 4-H Board. 
and he helped yearly with the Swiss Days race. Gene volunteered his time regularly at Swiss Heritage Village. He enjoyed all sport, sports, especially Purdue basketball. He enjoyed playing many games and cards very competitively with his family and friends. And he enjoyed fishing. Loving survivors include his wife, Janice, son, Jeffrey, and his wife, Heather Grog, daughter, Janine and husband, Roger Teeter, grandchildren, Nicholas Teeter, Adriana, and husband, Nathan Armbruster, Marcus Teeter, Alexander Grog, Isabella Grog, Sophia Grog, a brother, Fred and wife Henrietta Grog, Homer of, of Homer, Michigan, a brother Howard and wife Kathy Grog, a sister Letha and husband Don Letterman, sister Alice Clark, brother Larry and wife Julia Grog, brother Paul and wife Carol Grog, sister Marilyn and husband Ronnie Warden, brother Joe and wife Diana Grog, brother Ron and wife Sherry Grog, sister Joy and husband Bob Bogart, and sister Connie and husband Cliff Spencer. He was preceded in death by his father, Alfred Grog, mother, R. June Glenster Grog, daughter Irene Grog, daughter Elaine Grog, and brother-in-law Keith Clark. <clears throat> These are the facts about Gene's life. Um, our memories go much farther than that or much deeper, and I hope throughout this day that you will share those memories uh, together, that you'll share them uh, with each other. Uh, this morning, or this afternoon, uh, Dr. Roger Skinner, friend of the family, is going to come and share some of his memories of Gene. I first met Gene in the fall of 1961, when we were both freshmen at Huntington College. I discovered that uh, Gene liked to play sports just like I did, but uh, we were never on the same teams. He was running track and I was playing tennis and golf. However, in the next year, I got to know Gene much better as we both served as class officers for the sophomore class. I knew Gene came from a large family since uh, two of his brothers were already at Huntington College, but I didn't know just how many there were in the family until later. I also discovered that Gene came from a farming background and they had horses and cows. And uh, one time, uh, Gene invited me to go horseback riding with him. At one point, my horse got away and took off across the field and it knew where it was going, but I didn't know where it was going. Gene uh, took off after us and eventually caught up with us and got us all back safely. A couple of years after uh, we graduated from college, uh, I married uh, Mary Lou, and uh, three weeks after we were married, Mary Lou was in Jan and Gene's wedding. And then we all started new lives. Gene was involved in teaching and coaching, and I was involved in ministry and missionary work in Ecuador, South America. But we always maintained contact with one another wherever we were. As our families grew, and when we would come back home from the mission field for a year of home missionary assignment, we would always connect with Gene and Jan and their family. We would take our kids to their home, and we have pictures of our kids riding the ponies, driving the tractors, petting the animals, and feeding the lambs. In fact, one time, we even left our four children with Gene and Jan 
and they loved the experience of being on their farm for several days. Yes, Jean was a very good friend, but more importantly, Jean was a brother in Christ who had repented of his sin and had asked Jesus into his heart. Jean was a very generous and faithful prayer and financial supporter of ours, but not just to us. Jean supported many ministries around the world. Jean had to face some big challenges in his life, and his faith was tested, but he always trusted in the Lord and knew that God was with him no matter what. One thing I always appreciated about Jean was how much he loved his family and how much he supported his grandchildren. In fact, after some of our visits, when Mary Lou and I would be with Jean and Jan, we would uh, go back and wonder how in the world were Jean and Jan able to travel to all the events that they attended to see their grandchildren play sports. Well, it's been a privilege to know Jean. They have been able to share many happy and difficult times together. We are praying for peace for and comfort to Jan and Jeff and Janine and their families during these days. But it is great to know that because of Jesus, we will see Jean again one day in glory. I hope you all received a flyer, a bulletin with a song sheet in there, because I do not want to sing a solo. We are going to sing, Give of Your Best to the Master, and we will sing all three verses.
Gene was a coach. He was a teacher. He was a driver's ed instructor. I'm just curious, how many of you uh, sat in one of Gene's classes, whether, whether it, uh, in, in a public school or, or Sunday school? Um, how many of you sat in one of Gene's classes? Good number. How many of you had Gene for a coach? And how many of you uh, had Gene for a driver's ed instructor? <laughs> I've seen you drive. <laughs> you didn't listen very well. Consider the impact that Gene had upon this community and other communities for one who teaches, one who coaches, one who instructs. Invest deeply in the lives of those who sit under his tutelage. Gene was a coach. His teams weren't always filled with superstars, but he always required that they did their best. Many times superior talent is overcome by superior effort. Gene knew that, expected that, taught that. And it wasn't just something that Gene required of his players, it was something that he required of himself. Whatever Gene did, he wanted to do his best. Whether it was his role as a husband and father, his teaching career or coaching, or church leadership responsibilities, Gene gave it his best effort. Very few people saw the extent of his preparation for his various responsibilities. It was obvious that Gene cared about the quality of his various endeavors, but this afternoon, I would like to, for us to think about his motivation to do his best. Sometimes the why of what we do is even more important than the what of the things we do. Many times we have to understand a person's motivation because we, before we can fully understand a person's actions. I believe that Gene's motivation was firmly rooted in his faith and in his desire to serve his Lord Jesus Christ. Gene exemplified the meaning of Colossians 3, 23 and 24, where the Apostle Paul wrote, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord not, and not for men, because you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as your reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Let's take a closer look at this verse. When it says whatever you do, that's pretty inclusive. It doesn't leave much out. It's indicative of a person's lifestyle and, and, and a component of one's character rather than an occasional random act. Whatever you do, Work at it with all your heart. This speaks to the intensity of a person's activities. Work usually indicates effort, straining, and sometimes it's not comfortable. Work at it with all your heart, wholeheartedly, not half-heartedly. In basketball terms, it calls for playing intense offense and defense, not just offense or not just defense, all the time, whatever you do, wholeheartedly. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. Hmm. 
we can see men, we can see people. We can see the people we work with, we can see the people that, that we serve. But ultimately, we serve the Lord Christ. And what we do for other people, we do out of motivation because God has called us to that. He has commanded us to serve others. Gene understood that in his role as a husband and father, he was serving the Lord. And now his children serve the Lord. When he was coaching, he was serving the Lord. When he was working in the church, he was serving the Lord. In each capacity, yes, he was serving people, but ultimately he was serving the Lord. The verse goes on. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. Because you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as your reward. This is by faith. That reward is not immediate. But we trust the promise of God and we know that there is an inheritance We know that he will reward our service. The reward for giving our best does not always come from the people we serve. Sometimes Gene did his best and still got criticized. It happens. But it's important to remember that we ultimately serve God rather than man and that God is the one who rewards us and that his rewards are far greater than man's rewards. Hmm. Not even close. Not even comparable. And then the verse concludes by saying, in everything we do, we serve Christ. We don't compartmentalize our lives and we're a Christian from nine to noon, but not from one to four. Or when we're involved in this activity and not that activity. In everything that we do, we serve Christ. We need to give him our best There are many examples in the Bible of people who gave their best to the Lord. Let me mention just a few of them. The poor woman who put two mites into the temple treasury. It wasn't much, but it was all that she had. You see, only her best would do. When Mary poured very expensive perfume on Jesus' feet and then wiped his feet with her hair, It wasn't cheap imitation perfume. It was the real thing and it was very expensive. In fact, we're told that it was worth 300 days wages. The people around her thought that it was a waste. They thought that she was foolish for doing so. Judas Iscariot said, why wasn't this sold And, and, and then the money put into the treasury. But no, it was her best and only her best would do. When David went to purchase a place to build an altar, the owner of the property offered to give the property to him. But David said, I will not offer to the Lord that which cost me nothing. It was costly, but only the best would do. When the Israelites brought an animal to be sacrificed to the Lord, it was to be a lamb without blemish, without defect. It wasn't to be the one that uh, wasn't uh, real healthy. It wasn't to be a sick animal. It was to be perfect. 
because only the best would do. When God sought to save us from our sins, he gave his only begotten son, the perfect lamb of God, the sinless lamb of God, the only begotten son, because only the best would do. Yes, God gave his very best to us. He gave us his son. How do you respond to something like that? Jesus gave his life for us. He suffered on the cross to bring us salvation from hell and to bring us eternal life. How do you respond to something like that? I think we find the answer in Romans 12, 1, where it says, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. When we consider that God gave his only begotten son to die on a cross for us, when we look at that and we realize the sacrifice that that was, It only makes sense to respond to that by giving our very best back to him. It is only reasonable to live our lives for the one who gave his life for us. In view of God's mercy, when we look at God's mercy, when we look at his grace, when we look at his sacrifice, the only reasonable thing to do is to live our lives for the one who gave his life for us. You see, for someone who did that for us, only the best, only the best, the very best will do. We all know the kind of life that Jean lived I hope that we'll also remember why he lived that way. He served the Lord and only his best would do. Gene Grog was, Gene Grog was a good man. One of the best. Good husband. Good father. Serve the community. Good educator, coach. He's very active in his church. Yes, and Gene, Gene was a very brave man. I can't imagine, I can't imagine being a driver's ed instructor, can you? Oh, I don't care if you do have a break. But even a lifetime of good works did not earn Gene a place in heaven. In the early morning of July 18th, the only thing that really mattered was his faith. That's the only thing that mattered. The only thing that mattered was whether or not that Gene, by faith, accepted the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross for his sins. The only thing that mattered. Gene, Gene made the right decision. He chose well. Gene accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior and wholeheartedly gave him his best. And I hope that each one of us will do the same. It's the only reasonable thing to do because only the best will do. May God bless you and keep you close to his heart. May he comfort you, strengthen you, and guide you. 
may he be your Lord, the one whom you follow, for he will lead you to eternal life. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, today we're thankful that you saw fit in your wisdom to create a person whom we call Jean. One that we know as Jean, one who has touched our lives, one who has been an important part of our lives. one who taught us, one who shared in in laughter and in challenges of life. And we thank you for that, that promise of eternal life. And we thank you for the intensity of that meeting, that meaning today. We thank you that there is a heaven, that there's a place prepared for Gene. Unlike anything here on earth, more than we can even imagine, better, greater, more fantastic than our wildest imagination. And so now, Father, we pray that you would heal our aching hearts, And we pray that we might live our lives in order to honor you. Because in view of your mercy and your grace, only the best will do. We pray these things in the loving name of Jesus. Amen.